CFL number 45-532, team 12, take 5. Steel is the basic material in war as well as in peace. Japan gets its major supply of iron ore from China and straight settlement. Since there is no high grade ore available in the main island. Good coating coal is also not available here and must be shipped in from China. With a wartime requirement of more than 5 million tons per year, it is apparent that the steel industry became directly dependent on the availability of merchant shipping. Thus, the state of health of steel production could be said to be directly dependent on the operation of United States submarines. The net result was a gradual strangulation of our steel production with a consequent deterioration in the whole war effort. Not only munitions, but railroad, shipbuilding, and in every other field. CFL number 45-532, team 13, take 4. For the purpose of history, it is desirable to correct the fallacious impression widely held that Admiral Yamamoto, Commander-in-Chief of the Combined Fleet through the early period of the war, had once boasted that he would dictate peace in the White House. The facts are quite different. The Admiral had written a letter to the leader of a certain ultra-nationalist group in Japan, response to some communication from him. This reactionary leader then had many photostatic copies of the Admiral's letter distributed throughout the country to serve his own personal interests. It was from this letter that the statement in question was picked out, completely out of its context, and broadcast to the world, particularly in America. Here is one of the copies of the letter in question from which I translate the pertinent parts. Should hostilities once break out between Japan and the United States, it would not be enough that we take Guam and the Philippines, nor even Hawaii and San Francisco. To make victory certain, we would have to march into Washington and dictate the terms of peace in the White House. And I wonder if our politicians, among whom armchair arguments about war are being glibly banded about in the name of state politics, have confidence as to the final outcome and are prepared to make the necessary sacrifices. Clearly, this letter was intended to be nothing less than a sound rebuke to the so-called political leaders, including the addressee. The Admiral was simply pointing out to some of the sword rattlers in our country that war was by no means so simple a matter as they seem to think, nor so likely to be undertaken. On the contrary, that it was necessary before starting a war to see your way all the way through to the peace that must follow. He had lived upward of five years altogether in the United States, first as a language officer studying at Harvard University, and later as naval attaché in Washington, and hence, he was fully aware of America's tremendous wealth in natural resources and her overwhelmingly superior industrial capabilities, even more perhaps than other Japanese naval officers of his age and experience, therefore, he well knew that there was no, for, no chance of success for Japan in a war against the United States. Thank you, Mr. Mizutam. Madam, I have a copy of this letter for publication. Well, I'll try to play just a few minutes.
Rear Admiral Takeuchi, Imperial Japanese Navy, Chief American Section, Naval Intelligence. Roll 4, PSL 45532. Roll 7. Roll 7. Uh, Admiral Takeuchi, you were head of the American Section of Japanese Naval Intelligence from July 1942 to the end of the war. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, tell us something about your methods of obtaining intelligence from the United States. We didn't have a highly organized system for obtaining naval intelligence. Apparently, America thought we had a very elaborate type system which was far from the king. All, all of our information came from our naval taxi officers in various countries. And our foreign ministry. So far as America was concerned, these officers got their information from American magazines, newspapers, and radio broadcasts. After what time, our only remaining naval. Uh, Naval Taxi that furnished us with information were those in Spain and Argentina, and to some little extent, Stockholm. Data in your magazine giving information on your new construction was the best information our Taxi obtained. Many years before the war, we read many fantastic stories in your magazine about Japanese fights in your country. These stories caused us much music. Uh, Admiral, what information did you obtain from the photographs taken in our country? We didn't take much information from photographs taken by our tour. Most useful photographs came from your magazines and newspapers. Thank you. Besides, all of the PSL 45532, scene 17, take 4. Uh, Admiral Takauchi, you were head of the American section of Japanese naval intelligence from July 1942 to the end of the war. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, tell us something about your methods of obtaining intelligence from the United States. We didn't have a highly organized system for obtaining naval intelligence. Apparently, America thought we had a very elaborate system, which was far from the case. Almost all of our information came from our naval taxi officers in various countries and our foreign ministry. So far as America was concerned, these officers got their information from American magazines, newspapers, and a radio broadcast. After war started, our only remaining naval person that furnished us with information were those in Spain and Argentina, and to some real extent, Stockholm. Data in your magazine giving information on your new construction was the best information our attaches obtained. Many years before the war, we read in many we read many fantastic stories 
in your my dreams about Japanese fights in your country. This story caused us much amusement. Admiral, what information did you obtain from the photographs taken in our country? We didn't take much information from photographs taken by our tourists. Most useful photographs came from your magazines and newspapers. Okay. Uh,